Hey everyone, me and some of my stock asset friends here are very happy to welcome you to the Git and GitHub Bootcamp. So none of these people are my real friends, but they are free images from my slide software, which is pretty good too, and they'll be making some appearances throughout the course in my diagrams. Anyway, none of these fine folks are actually me. This is me here. Hello everyone, my name is Colt Steele. Um, I never know how much detail to go into in my background, but I'll say that I've been teaching people how to program for almost a decade. I've helped thousands of people change careers in my in-person boot camps, but I've also reached over a million students online. Ugh, I always feel a bit weird talking about it, but you can always check out my LinkedIn or my uh, instructor bio if you want more information. All that really matters is that I actually really enjoy teaching Git. It's a challenging thing to teach and it's a, it's a creative challenge for the teacher. So I hope you enjoy the course. I've spent a lot of time trying to make it the best possible Git course. So if you're watching this, you probably already know that Git is this amazing universal widespread tool that along with GitHub enables uh, and empowers millions and millions of users uh, and companies ranging from tiny startups all the way up to Fortune 50 companies to build things together to collaborate uh, and to maintain applications. So you probably already know that and a lot of people know it. They know it's crucial yet it often goes ignored. It's uh, not the most glamorous topic to learn at the beginning. I totally get why a lot of people prioritize learning JavaScript or CSS or Python or pretty much anything over Git. But the truth is, this is a very annoying expression, that the best time to learn Git is yesterday. Somebody told me something very similar, uh, a neighbor actually, about how the best time to plant fruit trees is five years ago. When you hear something like that, it's it's uh, natural to want to punch that person, strangle them, or maybe just roll your eyes. But there is some truth to this. But also there's a, another piece to that sentence. The second best time to learn Git is now. The second best time to plant fruit trees is today. Uh, probably the second best time to plant fruit trees was four years ago. Anyway, the, the point is that it's very important to try and learn Git as soon as possible uh, along whatever journey you're on. Uh, the sooner you learn it, the better because it's not just about learning some syntax. That takes some time, but you know you can watch a video or a course or read a book and, and learn the basics, but it takes more work. There's more than just learning the basic syntax. The real work comes with part two, or what I'm calling step two, actually living as a Git user and breathing Git. It needs to become second nature. Git becomes a fundamental part of your workflow. So that takes time, right? That's why the best time to learn Git is yesterday, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but also that's the goal of this course to help Git become second nature. So not just to teach you the basics, it's also helping you just learn and live Git, breathe Git in as a user. And that takes time and it takes practice. So that's why this course is more than just a bunch of lectures. Although it's a ton of lectures, obviously, uh, I can't get around that. That is uh, one of the, the core pieces of the course. It has to be educational. There's going to be that uh, explaining the syntax and demonstrating how things work. But also there are uh, quite a few exercises that I built to try and force you to get practice, to try and sort of steer you uh, towards becoming one with Git. So I highly recommend you do those. I'll point them out in a separate video. I wanna talk about some strategies for them. I also tried to make it somewhat interesting uh, and entertaining, but also visually, I, I spent way too much time, I think, making diagrams and Git is something that uh, I think benefits a lot from thinking about in a visual way. So I spent a lot of time making these diagrams. I hope you appreciate them. And I guess that's really all I have to say right now. Welcome to the course, everyone. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll end this welcome video with one not at all important note. In my courses, I often reference my pet chickens. Throughout my courses, I'll use their names in different files or in exercises, in diagrams, and students inevitably demand photos or videos of my chickens. So I'm just gonna get it out of the way here. If you wanna see them, here they are. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, once again, welcome, and I hope you enjoy the course. So next up, I'd like to talk about the course curriculum and what we cover, and I'll try to break it down into some smaller pieces, because on the surface, we cover quite a few topics related to Git and GitHub. So there's always a pressure, honestly, in these courses to fit as many related topics as possible into a course just to compete or to stand out in some way. And yeah, I can't ignore that, but I do want to try my best to make it very clear what actually matters uh, and what is fundamental, because not all of this stuff you see in front of you 
and there's likely to be more by the time you're actually watching this. Uh, there will be more videos or more additional sections added towards the end because students request them. But anyway, uh, not all of these are critical. So there's a couple of chunks, I guess, that I would, I would break things down into. The first bit is all about the core functionality of Git, working with the very, very basics, things like adding and committing and creating repositories, Git log, Git status, creating branches, checking out, switching, merging. That is your core Git toolbox. And then we talk about, uh, I'm calling it next level Git, but it's not crazy difficult stuff. It's just a couple of Git topics that won't come up as often. They're not part of your day-to-day -day Git life, but they still are very important. So we talk about diffing, the git diff command, stashing, and then we talk about quite a few ways of time traveling in Git or undoing changes. Git revert, git reset, git restore, undoing changes and going back to old work and detaching and reattaching the head. And there's quite a bit of stuff in that section. Uh, so it's important, but it's just not part of this Git core. Then we move on to GitHub and collaboration. So I've grouped together four sections here. I don't really have a nice title for it, but we basically learn about the basics of GitHub, working with GitHub, getting our code up on GitHub, getting stuff down from GitHub. We talk about things like uh, GitHub pages and GitHub gists and collaboration workflows. That's a very significant chunk of this course. We spend a lot of time on that, talking about the different ways that you could use Git with a team to collaborate along with GitHub and different structures, different strategies you can employ. There's not just one way and they all have some certain strengths and weaknesses. So I demonstrate those and spend a lot of time talking about it. It's pretty important stuff. Uh, so I've grouped that together with GitHub. And then after that, it's kind of just a mixture of other Git stuff that I felt compelled to include. And these are some of the more advanced topics or the niche topics. So this includes things like rebasing, cleaning up your Git history with interactive rebasing, squashing, dropping, fixing up, uh, all sorts of sort of fun parts in my opinion. We talk about tags, we talk about uh, how Git works behind the scenes and hashing. Uh, we cover things like uh, Git objects, Git blobs, Git trees. So there's stuff in here that you could go your whole life as a Git user without knowing. I think it's worth giving you the option at least uh, to check it out if you're curious. We talk about creating custom aliases and shortcuts and ref logs. That's a fun one. I'm happy with how that section turned out. Uh, and as I said, there's likely to be more if you scroll down right now through the curriculum. Uh, there's likely more content in the course that's not included here. So to recap this, there's quite a bit, um, and it's all Git and GitHub oriented, but there's this first chunk that is the core of Git on its own. Then we talk about some next level Git topics that are absolutely important to know, but they're not part of your typical hour to hour or day to day use case for Git, or they might not be. And then we talk about GitHub and collaboration workflows. And then it's just a, a bunch of other Git related topics at the end that I had a lot of fun recording. Okay. So let's get started.